Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to get started. And uh, really excited to be at the point with this tool now to be able to uh, present it to uh, the industry. And uh, yeah, I think you'll all be really excited to see uh, what it can do. So the plan today is that uh, I'm going to give my presentation and then um, and then there's going to be time at the end for questions. I figure we'll just go through everything so you can see um, everything that I'm going to show you today. And then um, there's probably going to be half an hour at the end where um, I wanted to have a, a Zoom meeting so you guys could unmute and feel free to um, ask me any questions that you have. Um, I'm going to walk you through this Fireblight tool today. So it is going to be kind of in the format of a tutorial. Um, but uh, I don't want you to worry too much about the, the nitty gritty details. What I really want you to take away from this session is what the tool is actually capable of doing. Um, so in general, what, uh, what it's capable of and how it can help you out. Um, later on though, I'm gonna follow up with some resources. So some actual step-by-step um, -step, um, information in like a quick start guide that will get you um, get you going pretty quickly and also some frequently asked questions. Okay. So just beginning with uh, kind of a quick refresher about Fireblight, um, the disease and the model. So of course, uh, it's a bacterial disease of apple and pear trees. And uh, infection is preventable, but we're using these antibiotic sprays where we have limitations according to the label, the number of times we can apply them. And also, of course, they're expensive. So when they do get applied, we wanna make sure they're being applied at the optimal times. So um, modeling can save time and money that way by identifying those key uh, management opportunities because these models are looking at the biology of the disease and predicting when those infections are gonna happen. Um, the model, uh, it models bacterial growth on the flower because uh, that's where the bacteria um, multiply and cause the primary infection, and then they're washed into the nectar pores within the flower by a wedding event. So uh, our industry has uh, used the Mary Blight model for many, many years. Um, and that we were able to access that model through um, through the University of Maryland's software. And uh, that, that software was created in the 90s, so it's really becoming out of date. Uh, it's no longer supported by the University of Maryland. So, um, you know, there's really no opportunity there to, um, you know, put in automatic alerts or to tie in with weather stations um, because they're just, they're really not working with that software anymore. It's become so out of date. Um, but, you know, our industry and other, um, you know, regions have recognized that we really need some upgrades to the user experience because with how out of date the old model is, it's really uh, preventing the uptake of, of using that model um, because, it, it, you know, it wasn't very efficient. Okay. So just uh, wanna start off by giving you a quick snapshot of the key features, uh, those improvements that we've made to the model that are, are now in what we're calling the Palm Blight model. So the Palm Blight model will give you apple and pear models. So pear is more susceptible. Um, so uh, that, that is reflected in the pear model. You'll see um, risk warnings earlier on pear than an apple. Uh, this is also a web-based tool, so you can use it on all devices that are able to access the internet. So that would be your smartphone, your tablet, or uh, your PC or um, Mac computer. So basically anything um, that accesses the internet. <clears throat> um, one of the major improvements is that we're now getting automatic weather feeding directly into the model. So no longer um, do you have to manually input that weather information. And currently we're supporting uh, Davis weather stations because we've had that provincial program where we now have around 100 weather stations throughout the province of Nova Scotia. And Davis is, is a fairly popular brand in, in other regions as well. Uh, we've also uh, 
got the uh, forecast from Environment Canada tied in automatically. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting that, that automatic data for future predictions as well, um, which will be important for your infection risk. And because we're getting these automatic inputs, we're now able to get those on-demand predictions. So, um, you know, you're getting weather data every 15 minutes, so your predictions will actually be updated every 15 minutes or whenever you choose to check. We've also uh, created the, um, the ability to edit that forecast, which you'll see more of later, and that's to edit your, your kind of um, how comfortable you are with the risk, that, risk that's being presented to you. Uh, we've also, because now you've got the, this automatic information feeding in, the model can work automatically in the background, and we're able to send alerts now for infection risk, EIP value, and wind. So again, I'll show that more later. This is just an overview. And um, you'll also see that the way that we've built this platform is that it's universal uh, across different crops and farm types and businesses. So the idea here is we have a long-term vision where this platform now can host um, other models um, that, uh, uh, yeah, so th that's an exciting part. We have uh, more of a long-term vision there. So um, for the Palm Blight model specifically, um, this one um, will have an annual subscription. Um, and that is um, you know, mainly to cover the annual server and maintenance fees. Um, so, so that will be an ongoing uh, subscription. We wanna make sure that it's sustainable and that we can continue running um, this, this kind of technology. So for this year, the price of that is gonna be $149 Canadian plus HST again, just to cover those, those kind of base fees. And uh, that's gonna be a competitive price this year for our early adopters as we just kind of um, you know, uh, learn how, how these fees um, will kind of play out going forward, but um, you know, we will always um, make sure that it's uh, that's a reasonable price um, to cover those maintenance fees. So I want to give you an idea of how this tool was created and verified. So um, it's the, the Palm Blight tool is based on the Mary Blight model, and we've just customized the user experience. So uh, you're seeing um, the conditions and calculations in the Palm Blight model are the same as uh, they've been laid out in the developer manual for the Mary Blight model. And we were also in direct contact with the developers of the Mary Blight, uh, the Mary Blight model. So we began this work in 2020. Uh, we reviewed the accuracy during the season in 2021. And then last year in 2022, we did a beta test with uh, local growers in Nova Scotia. Um, who were able to give us some excellent feedback and uh, who had a, a good experience with the model as well. And so all this time, all these years, I've been comparing the existing Mary Blight software outputs with the Palm Blight model to verify the match between the two programs. And we we're also um, able to make an upgrade uh, that, that fixed an inconsistency in the old Mary Blight model. It doesn't come up too often, but... Um, uh, because we're now actively working with this model, we were able to uh, make that update uh, in conjunction with, um, with the developers of the Mary Blight model. So this tutorial today will include uh, a couple different steps. I tried to kind of break it out into the different, uh, the different areas. So first, we're going to start with how to acquire a Palm Blight subscription. And then we're going to go into the registration and setup of a Perennia online account, uh, then activating your Palm Blight subscription, using the Palm Blight model, and then um, for those who are really keen, um, advanced knowledge and use of the Palm Blight model because it is really powerful. So um, I think we can learn over time how to uh, really take full advantage of it. Okay, so where you would begin is uh, this website, www.farmdatatools.ca. So this is, again, going back to this being a universal platform. So we're going to have this website here where you can 
see what kind of um, tools are developed, what kind of tools uh, might be coming in the future. Um, and you can click on them at the top uh, toolbar on this website. Um, Palm Blight's already there, so you could click on it to learn more about it. Um, we can have frequently asked questions here. This is kind of um, your, your one-stop place to find out about the, the models that are gonna be available as a tool um, on the application. So when you go into that Palm Blight page, uh, you're gonna find information about what it all entails and the, the features and benefits. And um, if, you're, if you're interested, then you would uh, press purchase at the bottom of that page there. And uh, then you would follow the steps to uh, make that purchase. And after payment, uh, you'll receive an email with the subscription activation code. So I want you to hold on to that activation code because first, um, you, if this is your first time using um, this website, um, which it should be for, for mostly all of you, um, you would have to um, follow the link in, in that activation code email to create your account. So that will be emailed directly to you, but um, if you're unsure, the, the link is also here. It's uh, app.farmdatatools.ca. You could also choose to log in directly from this website. So a few different ways you can get to the modeling website. So uh, now that you have purchased that subscription, uh, we're gonna go into your registration and setup of your Perennia account. Like I said before, this is uh, universal. So you only need to create the account once. And as we add um, future models in the future, then you would continue to use that same account and um, be able to add subscriptions or, or access any uh, free models as well. So uh, once you visit that website address, um, you'll see um, a login. Um, a login area, and uh, you'll choose don't have an account. Um, and so this will take you to the sign up instructions that I've got as step one here. So again, um, the step by step guide will be emailed to you afterwards. So don't worry about the details. Um, but you would basically fill out this information, your name and your email address, uh, create your password, save it somewhere safe. But if you do eventually forget it or lose it, um, you would be able to um, uh, say that you've forgotten your password and an and email would be sent to you and you could certainly uh, reset it. Um, but after you um, fill out your registration, a verification code will be uh, sent to you and that's shown on step two here. Um, so you're getting this email with this verification code and then the next step would be to enter that verification code and to uh, click to verify your account just to make sure that uh, you're not a robot um, and that we would like you to set up an account. So once you've gone through this registration process, uh, you're now ready to log in with the new uh, username and password that you have uh, created. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my PowerPoint and I'm gonna go into the uh, website live. So just bear with me for a moment. Okay, you should all see the website now. Uh, let me know if, if you don't. So I'm just gonna refresh here. I've had it up all morning. Um, okay, so when you, um, after you log in, this is the page that you would be directly brought to, and this is your dashboard. So from this dashboard, you can see the different models that are available, and currently we have uh, two of them. Uh, the second one is, is kind of still a work in progress, but today we're focused on Palm Blight. So uh, what I want you to uh, know from, from this page is that uh, we've got this sideboard, um, this kind of side navigation panel, where um, this is how you're going to navigate around the website. So um, uh, you can see here, you can always get back to the dashboard. You've got your list of applications and then your settings here as well. 
Uh, if you uh, accidentally lose that, that side navigation panel, it's this button here. So you can always show and hide that panel. So just so you're aware. And now uh, before going into Palm Blight, um, we need to um, go into the business settings and do a few things beforehand just to set up that, that model so that it, it can continue on um, automatically with a few more inputs from you. So what we're gonna do is on this uh, side navigation panel, we're gonna go into the business settings under settings here. And uh, you're going to be uh, presented with one business uh, when you sign up. Uh, I've already got a business set up here and I've just created a second business for demonstration purposes. Um, so, so this is similar to what you'll see. Um, you'll have, um, you know, so-and-so's uh, business will be set up for you. And uh, what you're gonna do is uh, go into this, uh, this gear here for further setup of your business. So these are your business settings. If you want to rename your business, feel free to do so here. Um, just type there, save your business, and that will be applied automatically. So you'd probably want to call it um, like the name of your farm. That would that would be that would make sense. Uh, but what you would do here is scroll down to subscriptions, and this is where um, the activation code from your purchase comes into play. So. Um, you're going to click on enter activation code. And so from that email from your purchase, you're going to take that code and you're going to type it in uh, right here and click add activation code. And so once you've entered that code, and, and I'm not going to do it because I've already got a Palm Blight subscription applied here, uh, but once you enter that code, um, you're now subscribed to Palm Blight, and uh, that's great. So the next step would be to kind of set up the structure of your business, the way you would like to monitor it. So what we're going to do is scroll back to the top of the business settings, and uh, there's this Farms uh, tab in the toolbar, and we're going to click on uh, Farms. And here, uh, this is where you're going to click on add a new farm. And uh, we've had a few people join since I started. So I just want to reiterate that um, you don't need to remember all of these details. There's going to be a quick start guide provided later. So um, it will be all step by step. What I just want you to pick up um, right now is um, what the tool is capable of doing. So uh, right now, I'm setting up a farm and uh, so I'm just, a farm is an individual civic address. So you might have, um, you know, your farm business might have, uh, uh, like your business might have a farm in Grafton and um, North Medford. So that's where you would, you might want to create separate farms to monitor. So uh, here I'm going to uh, say that it's called the best farm ever. Uh, 123 Production Street, Nova Scotia, in Kentville. And just fill out the details of that civic address. And th that's just for you um, to kind of visualize um, where this farm is. And uh, the next step, now that that farm has been saved, is um, to then put in the feet, the actual specific um, field situations that you want to monitor. So I'm going to go to the field tab next. Okay, I'm just going to hide this side panel so we've got more room here because I'm uh, I've got a small computer screen. So um, next, I'm going to add a new field. So the reason we have the business structure and then the farm and then the field is again, like we wanna make this universal and there are a lot of different um, farm structures out there. So, so that's just why we, we've got it laid out this way. 
So um, field, for example, um, I could say that I'm going to put in <clears throat> block A. Um, and the crop that you want to monitor, it's going to depend on how specific you want to be. So, I mean, you could monitor by variety, but I suspect that that's not practical for most people. Like, it's not probably not going to influence your, your fire blight sprays. But you might, for example, want to say... Um, like your early blooming varieties versus your late blooming varieties. So I could um, go that way. Your crop type, this is going to be important because if you choose apple versus pear, that's what's going to define um, which model is being used. So uh, just you know, be certain that you're monitoring apple and pear separately. And then uh, weather station. Uh, so in this field, if you know the specific station, you could start typing and uh, it will narrow it down for you. Um, or you could scroll through and see what's available and uh, choose from there. Um, we've got um, all of the fruit growers weather stations in this list and also uh, the provincial weather stations as well. The forecast weather station, this is um, again from Environment Canada. So Environment Canada only has a select um, number of forecast locations. So if you're in the Annapolis Valley, for, for example, we've got the Kentville uh, forecast and the Greenwood forecast. So um, you would likely choose uh, one of those. And then you would save your field. So now that this, been, this has been created, you could always um, edit or delete that field anytime in the future. Um, so that option is available to you. Um, yeah, so now, so now you've got a farm and a field set up and uh, you would be ready to start using the Palm Blight application now. Um, but before we move on, I just wanna talk a little more about the weather station versus the forecast. So uh, like I said, the weather station is your the, the on-farm Davis weather stations. And the purpose of feeding that data into the model is that it's giving you your current conditions on-farm, um, as well as recording the historic conditions um, on-farm. Um, on the other hand, the forecast, that's giving you um, future conditions according to what Environment Canada predicts. Um, so what you would do is select the near, nearest location to you um, that's available from Environment Canada, or you would select the forecast that's most accurate to you, basically. Uh, if you're not sure where uh, these weather stations are located on farm, um, this is where um, this other tool would be helpful. So you could, um, you could go to the farm weather tool. And this is a map of all of the weather stations available. So you could um, you could zoom in and uh, click on that uh, to find out like that, for example, uh, would be the name of that particular station. So you could search around this map if you're not already familiar with uh, the closest weather station to you. So, so that is an option. We're still working on this tool and it's gonna have other functions, but um, Basically, uh, you could use that to, to find the most appropriate weather station. And the weather stations are maintained by individuals. So, um, you know, you would just want to make sure that you trust that weather station. Um, and the, the network of the fruit growers weather stations is, um, is under a maintenance plan with Perennia. So, um, so those stations are being monitored uh, quite closely. Um, the more public stations are also currently being maintained, um, so we we will talk about that more in the future, um, just to uh, uh, let you know how how those stations are maintained and and how reliable they are. Okay, so uh, we're um, done with uh, the main settings, and we're now able to use the Palm Blight application. Um, you can access that application from the side panel here or uh, directly from the dashboard. 
So now whenever you log in in the future, um, you don't have to go to the settings that's already been done. You've already got your farms and fields. Now you just um, automatically go into the model every single time and it's already um, pre-populated for you. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Palm Blight. So uh, you've already uh, defined those weather stations and farms. So all you have to do now is select the appropriate business. So uh, I was in Michelle's business for, for demo and I created the best farm ever. So I'm going to select the best farm ever. And the field I did was block A. So again, I'm gonna select that. And now the model is gonna load. So again, I'm just gonna hide that side panel so it's not in the way. Okay, so this is what you're going to see um, when you uh, pull up the Palm Blight model. And, uh, you know, right away I can see, okay, I'm using the Apple model because that's what I selected. I'm focusing on my early blooming varieties here. And uh, we've also got current conditions, which is handy, um, you know, for your selected weather station. Um, I can see if there's been rain wind, um, temper current temperature. And if you're curious about the last time this was updated, you can just hover over here. And this was last reported at 10.15 a.m. It gets reported on a 15-minute interval, so um, it will automatically refresh um, once we've reached 10.30, uh, give or take a minute or two. Uh, there's also a summary area here. So this is really handy um, within the growing season. Um, you'll be able to see your last recorded spray, your last recorded phenology, seven-day risk forecast, and your two-day management outlook. This will make a little more sense when we kind of create a scenario um, below, um, so you can see how it's reflected um, in, in the summary. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, another feature of this model is, um, uh, you know, we've listed the current conditions up here. So because we're using um, an on-farm weather station and a forecast, what happens if the on-farm weather station actually records a temperature that is higher than the given forecast? So let's say it, the forecast says it's going to be 10 degrees, but it's actually 12 degrees. Uh, the model is automatically going to take that observed condition and overwrite the forecast um, in, in your current day's um, conditions. And it's going to update the model and update your infection risk automatically that way. And we often, we often see that with the forecast where um, conditions are, are kind of warmer than expected. So, uh, so that's kind of the, the overview section above. Um, the next section is the forecast, so uh, the next week, what you can expect, and then below that is the historical records, so what's been recorded by uh, the selected weather station. There's also a section below here, which is a graph. I'm not going to uh, really go over this. It's not a key component of, of the model. Um, but uh, it's there if you're a visual person and you wanna graph some of these, then, then you're perfectly welcome to do so. But I'm gonna focus in on, on the actual um, uh, rows here with the, the data. So I'm gonna go back to the forecast here. And um, uh, we're gonna change a few of these inputs to create um, a, a fake situation that uh, we can just look at to see how how the model um, changes. So um, what you would need to do within the growing season is you would need to tell the model uh, what the phenology is because um, that's something the model can't predict. It's something that uh, we can't make automatic. So you personally have to go in and um, tell the model what stage of phenology um, your orchard is at and the, you know, the block in the field that you're monitoring. So uh, let's, I'll actually go to historical records here. Let's say um, on March 24th, I'm gonna edit this date and I'm gonna say that green tip started on March 24th, just as an example. And I'm gonna save that. You can also click away and it will save as well. 
And then uh, let's say on March 28th, we're gonna um, say that that blossom started just as an example. Okay, if that's gonna apply to all future dates until you, you tell it otherwise, until you tell it petal fall is complete and happened. Um, and you'll see that blossom turned red immediately because that means that the blossom blight model has begun um, because we've met that, that required factor for infection. So um, you can see before blossom, um, the infection risk was not applicable. Now that we're at blossom, that infection risk begins. Okay, so another input that you would need to apply to the model is whether or not you observed a do. Oops. So um, the, the Davis weather stations come with leaf wetness sensors, but they're not reliable for predicting a dew. So this is an input that you would need to apply to the model. So you could um, go in and edit, and you would say, yes, a dew happened. And you, know, you could click away, or you can press save, and, and that's going to be applied there. Again, that turned red because um, that's one of the factors being met for the infection risk. And you could undo that uh, easily if you didn't mean to uh, put that in. Um, another input that you would need to apply to the model is whether or not an antibiotic spray has been applied. Um, currently, this says spray. I'm going to get that changed very specifically to antibiotic spray um, very soon. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is whether or not an antibiotic spray has been applied. So you would say yes. And uh, again, that would be you in inputting that information for the model uh, because it cannot predict when you have applied an antibiotic spray. So, um, so yeah, that would be editing those inputs. I'm just going to undo that spray for now because I'm going to change some of these temperatures just so you can see how um, it influences the model. So I'm going to go with some wildly warm temperatures just for demonstration purposes. And uh, you can see that the EIP value is being updated here because this is the value that's predicting the bacterial growth. And uh, you know our industry is very familiar with 100 being like the absolute threshold for when you could have epidemic levels of infection. Um, so you know with those kind of crazy temperatures, that's where we start to see a lot of bacterial growth. Um, so we've got uh, that EIP value updating and your infection risk updating as well. So if I just scroll up here, this is what I wanted to show you with the, the summary. So now we've got last recorded spray none because I, I removed that, that spray that I had put in. And um, last recorded phenology is blossom now because I, I set that blossom phenology. Now I've got a seven day risk forecast. If I hover over this, I've got an infection, infection risk, a high infection risk, on um, the two days following that, and then moderate and then low. So that's how you can get a quick snapshot of the week. And then for the two-day management outlook, well, we had an infection risk coming. So on Thursday, all conditions are met, evaluate your risk, and that's where you would make a decision on the farm. And on Friday, most conditions are met, it's a high risk. So evaluate your risk and, and how comfortable you feel with that prediction. Okay, so um, another thing I want to point out here, you've probably already seen them um, as I've been moving my cursor around, but if you hover over these headings, there's definitions and explanations about what each one of them means. So, you know, you're not sure about EIP, well, it's explained there. So that's um, always available to you at any time. And again, we're gonna have frequently asked questions as well. And you can reach out to me at any time as well if you have any questions. Okay, so uh, I am 
I'm going to move away from the model um, for now. And I want to talk about how you can set alerts. So, um, you know, you've, you've set up your farms and your fields, you've put in your phenology, and you're going to continue putting in any dews and any sprays. Um, so now how can you get automatic alerts um, if this EIP is getting to a scary number or if this infection risk is getting to a scary level as well? So that's where we're going to go um, back to the navigation panel. And again, you only have to set this up once, but what you're going to do is you're going to go to your profile. And uh, in your user profile, you're going to scroll down to uh, this palm blight section. And um, you can edit any of these default settings. So uh, notifications are on for me right now. I could um, click on that and actually turn them off and, and save that if I wanted to, like during the off season, um, you know, maybe you're just getting bombarded. Um, you can always turn them off there. Um, and then this is where um, in your email, you could, um, you could choose to um, edit this. Maybe you wanna receive a daily digest, uh, just letting you know where the EIP and the risk are at. Maybe you only wanna get alerts when um, your thresholds are being met. Uh, so that's an option. I think the default is that everyone's gonna get the daily digest. Um, and that's kind of nice to start out with, just so you know, like it's not going to your junk mail, you're getting that email alert. But then I would recommend switching to alerts only because I don't want you to see those emails every single day and, and just kind of um, get numb to them. So uh, I would definitely recommend switching to alerts only so that when your thresholds are met, that's when you're going to get your email alert. That's when you're going to get your text message alert. So uh, these are editable thresholds. So it depends on your, your comfort level. We've got some recommended numbers um, next to these thresholds. So um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so um, you could edit the wind gust threshold here, and this would be related to fire blight trauma events. So um, just a little explanation here, like according to the, the Beaufort wind scale, 62 kilometers an hour can start to damage twigs and, and break off, uh, those twigs would break off trees. So that's kind of why we're recommending, you know, if it's getting up to 60, you might want to have an alert to go and, and check throughout the orchard. Um, the EIP threshold, you might want to, you know, hear around 85 that it's getting high. So um, that, that could be a threshold that you might want to maintain, but it's really not until, um, you know, um, in the 90s or the 100s when you would start to um, start to consider application, um, depending on your, your risk tolerance. And then uh, the risk threshold, you can also change this uh, if you want to hear maybe it's moderate, high, or just during uh, infection predictions. So that's all up to you. We do have these default um, entries though. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to leave the website and I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint because there are just a few more examples I wanna show you um, that way. Okay, so we're back to the uh, oh, back to the PowerPoint, and this is all that's all in the step-by-step -step guide that you're going to receive. So uh, I wanted to go back to the PowerPoint here to show you what an alert email looks like. So this is an example. Um, we're still working on the design of this. I think we can simplify it, but basically um, you're going to get um, today's date, tomorrow's date. Um, an update of the risk level, the phenology stage that it's at, and the, the EIP risk. 
If, um, if that's exceeding your threshold, then you're going to get a warning symbol um, telling you um, how it, it um, is getting close to or, you know, has exceeded your threshold. And those are sent at 6 a.m. every day. So those are only uh, once a day, actually, um, because, you know, you don't want to get an alert every 15 minutes. So we kind of had to define a, a specific time of day when those would be sent out. And then directly from the, the email, you can click on that date and it will bring you directly to the model on that specific farm and field. And uh, you can see, make sure all of your inputs are correct and, uh, and take a look at the model that way. Wind alerts, like I mentioned for trauma monitoring, those would also come through email. So, um, you know, high wind alert, we, we saw 77.2 kilometer per hour winds. Uh, check for tissue damage. Um, uh, so that that would be an option as well. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so text alerts are also an option uh, coming soon. Um, we're still kind of testing this. Um, but uh, uh, this is how you would set it up. So it's also in the, the user profile um, under user information. So all you would have to do is fill in your mobile phone number and your carrier. So that's my number, that's my carrier. And um, you would just in the Palm Blight Alerts area, um, make sure that SMS is set to receive alerts. And what it would look like is like this. So this, these are some examples of uh, high risk uh, on the specific date, telling me what the EIP level is. Um, uh, so for the current date and the next date, and also an example of a wind alert uh, sent by text. Okay, so um, there's even more power to this tool. So there are a few uh, more advanced features that I wanna cover. So um, what you can do is you can actually add users to the same uh, farm uh, organization or business. So you can invite your employees to view the same um, fields and farms as you. Um, however, you are not seeing the same um, inputs. So if somebody puts in an antibiotic spray on their specific account, you're not gonna see it on your account. And we did it this way because we didn't want employees changing things um, that are gonna affect somebody else who's maybe not aware that that change was made. So we are keeping those accounts um, completely separate other than the, um, the farm and field structure of, of the business can be shared um, so that not everybody has to go into those settings and, and set that all up. So uh, what you would do is um, from the side panel, you would, um, you would choose businesses um, and then you would go into the settings of that business um, and then uh, there would be this user option right next to farms in the toolbar and uh, you would add a new user. What you would do, you enter their name and their email address and then they get an invitation link. Um, so they would be set up on uh, the business's subscription to Palm Blight and they would have access to um, the farm and field structure. If you would um, invite them as an administrator, they can change that farm structure. But if you invite them as a user, they can't change the farm structure, but they can still use the model. Okay, another uh, neat feature of this model is that um, the critical values are shown in red text. So um, uh, there are four factors that contribute to a fire blight infection. Um, so we already talked about a few of them. So blossoms would be uh, one of them. So once that blossom phenology is selected, it turns red because it's one of the factors being met for infection. Uh, next, if we have any uh, wetness, which could be rainfall or dew, um, uh, that would also meet one of the factors for infection. Uh, it could be greater than two, two, 
than 0.25 millimeters or um, greater than 2.5 millimeters the previous day, or a dew or a dilute um, non-antibiotic spray um, would all uh, count as a wedding, a wedding event for infection. Uh, next would be a warm average temperature. Um, so if it's greater than 15.6 degrees Celsius, that's another factor being met for infection. So again, that value, if it's above 15.6, would be in red um, because it's contributing to your infection risk. And then the final one is the EIP. If it's greater than 100, um, that would also be meeting um, the, uh, one of the factors for the infection risk. And that's a representation of the uh, bacterial population. So even if you had three of these factors and uh, you know your EIP was close to 100, it would say it was a high risk, but you would still want to be very careful about, um, you know, is that an acceptable risk to you where you're so close to infection um, and just, you know, not quite at 100, but uh, is, is that an acceptable risk to you? So that's how you can monitor. Uh, also, you saw me edit the, the temperatures to some, some crazy temperature values, but um, what you would actually do is, um, you know, if you wanted to evaluate your, your risk in the season, you wanted to say, well, the forecast says it's going to be 20 degrees, but what if it actually gets to 22 degrees? That's where you can go in and uh, bump the temperature up maybe one or two degrees and uh, see how that influences your EIP value and your infection risk. So uh, you saw me, you, you can edit any of these rows, you can edit the phenology, the temperature, the rainfall, the dew, and the spray. And um, any of the edits you make will be marked with an undo arrow, so you can always go back to um, prior uh, values. You can also download predictions. So like I said, these are live predictions. So every 15 minutes when the forecast uh, updates, that's going to update the model predictions as well. So if you want to save a specific um, output, you can download that prediction to um, you know, an Excel file, a CSV file, um, so that you have that for your records. Um, yeah, so that, that button is just um, next to the forecast or the historical records. So um, also something I, I want to explain here is um, how the Environment Canada forecast works. So we noticed um, recently that the Environment Canada prediction doesn't align with um, exactly with the, the Mary Blight model, uh, what it requires. So the Mary Blight model requires a maximum daily temperature and a minimum daily temperature. What Environment Canada provides is a nighttime low temperature, which they define as 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. So that's actually crossing days. Um, and then they give a daytime temperature as 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., which would be on a, a specific date. Um, but that would be the daytime high temperature. So they're not actually giving the daily high and the daily low. So what we did to align better with the Mary Blight model, because Environment Canada is really our, our best prediction system here in Canada, um, is that uh, we have shifted the forecast so that um, the morning temperatures, um, for example, um, they usually tend to be the coldest temperatures. So um, we're using that as the daily uh, low temperature. Um, so we're kind of shifting that forecast so that um, for uh, Tuesday the 3rd, we're looking at um, this zero degree as the daily minimum and the 14 degree as the daily high. On May 4th, we're looking at zero degree low, 15 high, and the 5th, we're looking at five degree low, 14 degree high. So that's how we've shifted the forecast, um, just in case you're, you're curious at why that's not matching up exactly with Environment Canada. And uh, the other thing I wanna point out about the forecast, um, you know, 
everybody knows that there's limitations to the forecast. So just be aware of that so that you have more control over this model. So, um, you know, be aware that Environment Canada's rainfall forecast only happens when there's a greater than 30% chance of rain, only when there's amounts that are greater than two millimeter and only amounts within the next two days. So we're only getting a two day rainfall forecast um, with actual specific like um, rainfall volumes. So if you see maybe in um, like the weather network forecast that like four days from now, we're gonna get rain, you could, you could put that um, yourself into the model because Environment Canada is not yet making that prediction. So just be aware, forecasts are not always accurate, which is why we've made this model so um, interactive and, and editable so that you have uh, the power to work with that model. Uh, and so uh, finally here, um, I did mention it can be used on smartphones and uh, you don't have you don't have to download it to your phone. It's simply um, on the Internet. So you just have to go to that website, uh, the, the www.app.farmdatatools.ca. Uh, you just have to enter that um, into your web browser. And then the, the login screen would be there. You would log in, and then you would immediately have access to the Palm Blight model. And it's going to adjust the, the size of the, the, um, the application to the size of your screen. So you can see that it's, it's stacked now instead of being side by side. Um, so it's, it's kind of a nicer uh, user experience on the phone. Yeah, so, so feel free to give that a try on the phone. Uh, really good for when you're on the go. So uh, that is a overview of Palm Blight. Um, it's now available, so you can go directly to that website um, to subscribe and then to follow through with uh, setting up your farms and fields and to try out the application. Um, so just want to say congratulations to all of you for, for being the early adopters. Um, if you have any issues and feedback, please communicate it to me directly. I have direct access to, um, to the computer software programmers and, and have been working with them all along. So we'll get it um, dealt with as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions now. Um, I'll stop sharing and open it up.